Another burial for Ukraine's war dead. 46-year-old Arsen Fedosenko was a military photographer killed by a glide bomb in a war that's lasting much longer than most ever imagined. My feeling is it will finish in political way, not in the, in the field, you know. Ukraine's president has always insisted that negotiations can only happen after Russia withdraws its troops. Volodymyr Zelensky's presidential term would have ended last month, but in a country at war, there can be no election now. 70 to 80 percent Ukrainians say that we should postpone elections. On Anton Ruzhetsky conducts public opinion polls and says surveys show that trust in the president dropped from about 90 percent after the start of the war to around 60 percent now, while more than half of the public doesn't trust the parliament. They do not say that Zelensky itself is like a bad guy or incompetent guy or corrupt guy. They say that there are some people in his team that are not very good. In February, Ukraine's highly trusted military commander was dismissed, not long after the general said Ukraine needed to mobilize as many as half a million new soldiers. Anastasia Balba's husband volunteered to fight at the outset of the invasion. Today, he's still on the front line. She's part of a group of women who've been calling for their exhausted men to be demobilized, but without success. For two years, the government has been telling the whole country we're doing well at the front, she says. They should have been preparing the reserves. Ukraine has recently stepped up recruitment to replace the casualties of war, including Katerina Fedorova's brother. The truth is the guys are dying, she said, but nothing is solved. And even after all of the sacrifice, it's hard to envision just when this all ends. Briar Stewart, CBC News, Kyiv.